Um, hi, uh, my name is John McClellan. Uh, I'm from GMEX and I'm one half of Team Peros. The other half of this team is Paul Pearson from Latin Global uh, Structural Geology. Um, so our submission is called Mantle to Mine. And we think that this is a roadmap for mineral discovery and we think it adds a lot of value for South Australia in terms of exploration. So let's get started. So the target for this is obviously world-class ore deposits. However, there is an, an incredible challenge and that is that the search area uh, is extensive and we have extensive cover. So it poses a problem. There's a bunch of additional challenges. We've got a plethora of previous research and some really fixed ideas. Uh, there's hundreds of geophysical anomalies to drill. So what is the solution? Well, we think that we have the solution and that is a mantle to mine approach. So our approach, and I hate to say this, is it's actually innovative. Um, it maximizes the use of the anomalous data that's available within the state. And we can define the limits of prospective mineral belts through the cover, and that is really important. Um, we, I think, gathered about 45 targets, so we had about 21 copper and 24 gold targets. Uh, however, we've delivered the, uh, we have delivered all these targets, but we, we have delivered 10 high priority targets, and these are mainly in the less explored areas. Um, so we try and identify specific internal zones of follow up, and what we try to do is mostly eliminate interpretation bias. Uh, our approach, I guess, reduces the targeting risk and exploration costs by reducing the search area. So we try and minimize that and be as precise as possible. And we try and reduce the time to the next major mineral discovery. So what is this mantle to mine approach? How do we deal with this? Okay, we're in a data rich environment in some respects. So we think that supervised machine learning is actually really important. We want to get the best on that data set as, uh, 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 as we can. Uh, however, we cannot forget the geology. So we've taken a process uh, geology approach and we've looked at using some geomechanical modeling. And we use both the machine learning and the geomechanical mechanical modeling under a mineral systems analysis approach. So we're trying to uh, integrate it under that umbrella. And we think that we have a really robust exploration target set. So what is the mineral systems analysis? Well, we know that there's critical uh, processes and components that lead to the formation of these large ore deposits in the upper crust. We've got time-specific events, so deformation events are very important. We've got all the deep processes that source ore metals, ligands and fluids. Uh, we need that energy that drives the system, uh, the architecture that allows that upward passage of the fluids and melts, and the focusing mechanism that actually concentrates these flow fluids into physical traps. And that's something we're quite interested in. Uh, obviously, we've got a strong physiochemical gradient that we need to consider, uh, and we think of that as a trap that potentially causes that ore precipitation. And these post-mineral processes that cause exhumation, preservation, and upgrading of the, the occurrences. So here's a diagram from Skiro, and uh, what we think we can do is we can actually predict these upflow zones that Skiro talks about. And... Um, when we think about uh, uh, the machine learning, we have about 100 uh, criteria in total uh, that we can use to, to map out these systems. Obviously, the geodynamic setting is quite important. So we need to think about using things like the magnetotellurics, the metal and fluid sources. So obviously, the hilt of a granite suite is quite important. The crust, crustal architecture is, is, uh, is critical. Uh, so we need to consider all these regional structures. And we need to think about what's driving these fluids in the system. Also, the chemical traps is a reactivity contrast between lithologies and also physical traps. So uh, things like mag one density indexes are quite useful. So what is supervised machine learning? So essentially, we take just over 100 predictive maps generated from the, the mineral systems analysis. And we apply a classification and a regression to this, this data set. And what we decided is through uh, um, some experiments that the random forest was the most accurate. So that was the approach we took and the algorithm we used uh, on the data sets. And this learned, uh, I guess, the complex relationships between the known mineral deposits and the fine tr training areas that we set up. 
and also the variables extracted from predictor maps. It then applies that knowledge uh, to the less known areas and classifies or predicts distance to the mineralization. Now from our machine learning, our supervised machine learning results, we have got some fantastic results, outstanding results actually. Um, we successfully predicted non mineral centers from blind testing. An example of that is, uh, here's a detailed map showing results in the machine learning on a phase two, uh, and this is looking at regress distance to copper. Um, so basically we took the, the training data, uh, or the machine learning was trained in the Olympic Dam area, and independently predict prominent, prominent hill. And not only did it predict prominent hill, but it predicted the areas where we had most of the, the occurrences around prominent hill also. So it was a fantastic result. So what else are we considering in this project? Well, we're looking at geomechanical modeling. So what is geomechanical modeling? Well, it's a process modeling approach. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to simulate the response to the structural architecture and stress transfer through the blocks uh, that have responsible, been responsible for, for the deformation and mineralization. And we want to focus on that deformation uh, along the boundary uh, of faults and lithological contacts and uh, examine low values of things like minimal principal stress and fluid pressure required for failure. These are important when you're thinking about focusing fluids. Uh, there's an enormous predictive power for this, uh, particularly in, in mineral systems, because it, essentially because it can uh, predict mechanically failed zones within the system, and we know that they're more susceptible to failure in fluid. So we've had some outstanding predictive results on this, independently obtained uh, uh, on the known deposits. Here's an example here. This is looking at uh, in the IOCG province. Um, this is looking at the fluid pressure required for failure. So it's looking at the least amount of fluid we need to get the, the area to fail. And we can see that the, the geomechanical modeling independently predicts most of these large IOCG deposits in the region. So it's a fantastic result. Uh, here's just a close-up of an area in the Gold, uh, Gullar Gold province, and we can see that the modeling again predicted uh, independently areas with uh, anomalous gold uh, values. So it's, uh, it's actually really powerful. So integration, how do we integrate these things? Well, we've got two proven and complementary techniques combined to predict outflow zones and all precipitation over the, the Gullar Craton. Uh, we define numerous uh, uh, targets. Um, specific internal, uh, internal exploration opportunities were identified and the raw targets were filtered and right. Uh, we thought about things like nature of post-mineral cover, depth of post-mineral cover, groundwater geochemistry and previous drilling. So there was a lot of thought went into, uh, into developing these target sets. So the product that we, we, we want to provide is that we've actually got some really robust exploration targets. So we've used all the data sets from the uh, supervised machine learning results, all the data sets from the geomechanical modeling results, and combined these to provide the best targets possible. And we've not only done that, but we've thought about it in a geological uh, um, environment. So these targets are actually quite robust. Uh, so in summary, we've utilized the data-driven methodology, so that's supervised machine learning. We've, it's been guided by a mineral systems approach, so uh, don't, don't ever forget the geology. And it's been uh, highly complemented by a process modeling approach using geomechanical analysis. And we think we've provided a fantastic data set and some, uh, some A1 grade targets. So we think that the mantle to mine approach is a fantastic recipe for success.